I don't know why these slides are not coming in. Um, I am trying with this app, but I'm going to walk you through kind of my journey, right? And then uh, happy to share the slideshow with anybody afterwards. So um, I call myself a soil junkie just to give you a little bit about, you know, my background. And and by the way, thank you, Sustainable Brands Turkey. Sorry for the technical glitch here. Um, this is, I think, my third time uh, speaking at this event. Um, you know, I've spent the last three decades connecting agriculture to popular culture and really being in the trenches and understanding our relationship to soil and ecosystems. So as a serial ecopreneur for the last three decades, um, I've worked, you know, from food to beauty to fiber. Uh, I started a number of companies, including the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, uh, as well as Under the Canopy, the first sustainable fashion and home brand in North America and one of the first in the world, and a number of food brands, including Good Catch and Good Sam, all built on either plant-based or regenerative agriculture. Um, I've been partnering with the Rodale Institute, and I've been uh, on the board of the Organic Trade Association. I'm currently chair of the board of an organization called the Textile Exchange. So as Tomas said, you know, this has been a long and winding road, a journey of a thousand miles. Um, and I believe that the fashion industry more than ever before uh, is at the forefront of the next sector of change. And, you know, when I started this journey and I coined the term eco fashion in 1995, um, people thought I was crazy. You know, how do we marry, you know, the tree hugger and the fashionista and style the world of change while changing the world of style? And, you know, looking at fashion as a very powerful vehicle to expand organic and regenerative agriculture. When you have a third of the world's textiles using cotton, cotton being a very, very important crop in the agricultural equation, even though it's less than 3% of the world's agriculture, it represents up to you know 10% of the most harmful insecticides and chemical pesticides that ultimately are destroying soil health. So when we start to talk about, you know, Eco Fashion and Eco Fashion Corp, the company I'm running today, which is a greenhouse of brands, we're looking at how do we <clears throat> leverage the power of fashion to drive change where soil health and changing the way that we're farming and the methodologies we're farming with can be a very important part of climate change and sequestering carbon into our soil. So, um, Moving on, I will just say that, you know, one of my favorite quotes and one that I have really hung my hat in on for my entire career is that we can't solve today's problems with the same consciousness that created them, right? We have to climb that ladder of consciousness. We have to be thinking differently about the choices we're making. I wrote a book called Eco Renaissance, co-creating a stylish, sexy, and sustainable world. And through that book, I really identify five key pillars of driving change collaboration, consciousness, community, creativity, and connection. And so, you know, in this, you know, next 15 minutes, I want to frame this journey of eco-fashion, the importance of regeneration and resilience, and how those five pillars are, or, you know, are all part of the DNA of this shift, right? Because as we climb and we start to th see things differently, as business leaders, we have to be able to give people what they love and seek while also making a difference to human and environmental wellness and farmer and worker welfare, and of course, future generations. And people, when they think about their fashion and their clothing, and they're thinking about, you know, the department store, the stores they're buying it in, and they don't realize that it starts at the farm when it's made from cotton. And so there's a lot of work that we need to do. But what's really exciting for me is all these years in, <clears throat> the world, the industry, the $3 trillion global fashion and textile industry is finally waking up. The problem is, is that this industry is very broken. It's very siloed. Those who are, you know, in design <clears throat> are not talking to sourcing, are not talking to sustainability, are not talking to finance. This has to be approached like a holistic ecosystem. Everybody has to be at the table, right? And through, you know, looking through the lens of it's not about doing less bad anymore. It's about doing more good. We all have to play a role through every one of those departments. 
So when I started MetaWare, which is the turnkey manufacturing platform in Eco Fashion Corp, it's to meet brands and retailers wherever they are and help them on this journey, help them get into the trenches of the farms. We started a farm project called Reset, which stands for Regenerate the Environment, Society, and Economy through textiles. And one of my favorite numbers is 11 because it's really mean it really means 1 plus 1 equals 11. We are exponentially stronger together than apart. From local to global, from the farmers in Turkey or India or in the US, all the way to all of the manufacturing and supply chain partners, all the way through to the brands and the retailers, we all need to work together to build win-win business models, right? Where just like in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, our first basic need as human beings is food, what we put in our bodies. But with fashion and textiles, it's about what we put on our bodies, right? The skin is the largest organ in our bodies. It's the primary organ for absorption, right? And soil is the skin of the earth. It's very metaphoric, right? We have to protect the skin of the earth because it's meant to sequester carbon out of the atmosphere. And when it's broken through all the chemical agriculture, especially in the cotton industry, where the misconception is, well, we're not eating it. So it doesn't matter how much we strike, spray it. Doesn't matter, you know, how many chemicals we put on it because we're not consuming it. Well, we are. 60% of a cotton plant is going back into the food stream, right? So when we think about what we put on our bodies, what we put in our bodies is very much connected to that from the standpoint of cotton. And when we look at, you know, the magnitude and multitude of impacts that are going on in the cotton, industry. We can't turn our backs on it, right? And so that's what's starting to happen is, you know, you have in Turkey, I think 50% of agriculture is actually, or 50% of the land is actually being farmed as agriculture. Cotton is a very important crop in Turkey. I've been working in Turkey for decades, um, and it's exciting to see some of the regenerative projects that are now happening. Um, but, you know, when we talk about regenerative agriculture, right, when we talk about resilience, if you talk to farmers, what they really care about is climate change resilience, they care about making sure that they can put food on the table so their livelihoods are at stake. And so we have to work and elevate the farmers and protect them and look at the, and remind ourselves that, you know, healthy soil means healthy, healthy plants. It also means healthy people. Right. So we have to work with nature, not against it by restoring soil health, protecting farmer livelihoods, addressing climate change mitigation, protecting the diet, uh, the biodiversity in the soil, because that's all part of the immune system that's within the soil. And when you have 80 billion garments a year that are being produced, releasing carbon, and you have, as I mentioned, a third of the world's textiles being made from cotton and 60 million people in the garment industry, you know, that touch that industry, 70% of which are women, we can't ignore the fashion and textile industry, you know. You'll see statistics vary, but depending on if you include agriculture, if you include transportation, which are very fundamental, as mentioned, into the textile industry. But, you know, up to 8% of the world's carbon footprint is coming from the textile, the fashion and textile industry globally. So we have to look at every single touch point in our supply chains, but we have to start at the seed. Remember, if you talk to a farmer, the seed represents life. It is that seed that we bring up our supply chain all the way to that finished product. So it's not just about looking good. It's about feeling good and doing good in the world. And it's about understanding the symbiotic relationship between humans and our environment, that what we breathe out, nature breathes in, and what nature breathes out in oxygen, we breathe in, and we have that interdependence. And I'll never forget when I took a target buyer to my farm project reset in India uh, before COVID happened, and she was literally crying. 30 years she's been buying sweaters and has never actually seen raw cotton. And we forget, we lose sight of the fact that every choice that we make has a relationship to the earth, right? It's like water for chocolate. 
It is the energy within everything that's in, on, and around us. So we have to redefine, we have to redesign our sourcing and supply chain models. We have to think about accountability <clears throat> and not just storytelling, but connecting source to story so that we're story doing. And, you know, when we talk about the fashion revolution, which was a movement started in 2013 as a result of the Rana Plaza factory collapse. And, you know, it really woke a lot of people up to who made my clothes? What's in them? How are they being made? Right. And that's such an important question to ask, because, you know, it used to be that we just listened to fashion and beauty advertisements and we saw the magazines or what are the models wearing and we didn't think about these things but we have the power it's no longer you know about staying ahead it's about not being left behind it's no longer a choice it's an imperative that we vote with our dollars that we think about the impacts and the proliferation of chemical water waste energy you know these these impacts that are happening that are polluting our air and water resulting in the fashion industry being the second largest polluter in the world you know second to coal right so in my book eco renaissance i talk about creation that is a really important fundamental of this entire movement because through the lens of design we can change the world right that we are all creators. So we have to co-create and design a different kind of reality where we can create better systems that are resilient, that are regenerating, not just even sustaining anymore, but across categories, across distribution channels, different price points, connecting that source and story where we can go from local to global. And it's not just about making fashion regenerative and sustainable. It's about making regeneration and sustainability fashionable. And in our brand, Yes And, the whole premise, the mantra is that yes, you can have style and quality and fit and color and comfort and hand. And when you look at the suppliers, and again, I'm sorry, my PowerPoint wasn't able to come up. I have a, a, a slide with a lot of the different brands and the retailers and the factories in Turkey that are, are working alongside these different companies together, right? Co-creating change. Yes, we can have all the things that those brands and retailers want. And oh, by the way, be regenerative, be focused on soya health and building better ecosystems and healthier ecosystems so that we can all thrive, right? Making it easy for today's consumer to, you know, be activated, to be inspired, to be empowered, to give them vertically integrated supply chains from the farm up. One of those big stigmas that oftentimes comes with the fashion industry is, well, if we're going to do things more sustainably, it's going to cost so much more money, right? So I can't afford it. Otherwise, I would do it. The whole premise of yes and and this movement has to be built on leading with design. And then, oh, by the way, it's also regenerative, circular, you know, organic, low impact, ethically made and created so that you're not posing the why would you buy sustainable fashion it's why wouldn't you but by making creating and co-creating supply chains that are vertically integrated literally from the farm up we can pass that added value on we can pass those efficiencies on so that we can be more competitive on price so we can take that question away from why would you support or buy organic or regenerative or sustainable fashion and turn that into why wouldn't you because you can have everything that you want. And which is one of the reasons I've been going on, there's a TV channels in the United States called uh, QVC or, or HSN. I've been going on these programs. And again, I had some photos to show you, educating and connecting and showing consumers that this is fun. It's cool to be conscious. And fashion, you know, it doesn't have to be so scary, but there's so much power that we have you know, and there's amazing, amazing efforts going on, unlike ever before, which gets me so excited. And the next pillar in the eco renaissance is community, right? Because business can be such a force for good, you know, and now there finally is unity in the community at the textile exchange. We have almost 
800 members, you know, the biggest companies in the world all at the table talking about regenerative agriculture, talking about how can we reduce our collective carbon footprint by 45% by 2030 coming together. You look at 7,400 B Corps now around the world in 161 different industries and 92 different countries. And we all have to come together to hold hands, even with government. And there is government policy coming now in the UK, in Europe. There are policies that are going to be demanding that brands and companies in the fashion and textile industry are going to be required to disclose their supply chains. Transparency is front and center now, right? Traceability, data verification, and making science-based climate targets that can be backed up with full accountability. So these brands and retailers today are all waking up to the tides are coming. The consumer demand is growing, especially with the younger generations when they see that this is no longer about climate change. We are in a climate crisis and they understand and appreciate that they need to be making different choices. But affordability is so fundamental to this, these younger generations, which is why we have to work together. We have to address the sustainable development goals. We have to elevate the farmers and build different kinds of systems that are more disruptive, renting, recycling, repurposing, looking through circular lenses, but also always through regeneration which is not just about cotton. There are a lot of other fibers and materials that are playing in this regenerative fiber movement. You also have <clears throat> fibers such as tensile lyocell, which is now net carbon zero certified uh, from lensing. You know, you have waste products, you have biomass, food waste, right? We're seeing all kinds of material innovation right now in the fashion textile industry, looking through the lens of building more holistic ecosystems, you know, and it's, we have to reduce obviously the old school tenets of, you know, social justice, right? But this whole movement of regeneration, the circularity, this is wisdom of the indigenous cultures. This isn't something new. This is about an eco-renaissance, a rebirth of humanity coming full circle, right? Waking up to the fact that we all are a part of an ecosystem collectively. We are all in this together, right? Both outside the nature, but also the world we live in. And I think if the pandemic taught us something, it was that, right? We are all sharing this planet Earth. It's like the film, Don't Look Up, right? We are not two different camps, even though we're living in this modern day Star Wars, the dark and the light forces at odds. I wish we could all hold hands globally and remind ourselves, you know, that we have to shift models and again, create a different kind of reality because 70% of the impacts in fashion and textiles are actually at that fiber and material level. So it does start at the farm. It does start at the fiber, at the seed. And so another layer of this that is really fundamental to connect source to story is integrating technology. This is really a big new frontier in fashion and textiles, driving resilience and regeneration as well, which is that this new frontier of technology, whether we're talking about on-demand or 3D sampling or creating creating efficiencies around, you know, uh, virtual and AI intelligence. And we're, we're getting into blockchain technology where we can actually connect through QR codes, soil data and studies on carbon and water retention and, and, you know, wages and waste and bring that data up the supply chain to a finished product. So if that far end consumer just wants to wear a beautiful shirt or dress and feel good about it from the way it looks on them and they don't want to know a thing, they have that choice. But if they want to know the what, the why, the where, the how, and really you know, feel that what they're wearing, what they're choosing can make a difference, they have the ability to scan that QR code and learn about the farmers and the workers that are making their products, learn about you know, the impacts in soil, learn about how we're all together making a difference and you know focus on that esg data both environmental economic social you know it all plays a role in driving change and i'll just say you know with um margaret margaret mead's quote um which you know 
Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And so we all have to come together. And I'll just leave you with a couple of, you know, my favorite additional quotes and why, you know, this movement is so important. And we're relatively speaking just at the beginning with fashion and textiles, even though, as mentioned earlier, I've been doing this for 25 plus years, um, driving this change. But I think we're right at that tipping point now. And remember that work is love made visible, right? If you love your work, it's not you know, it's not work, it's love. And we're all in this together. And, you know, I think one of the things I've always appreciated about working in Turkey is that sense of community, that sense of awareness, and, you know, this understanding that, you know, traceability, that innovation, verification, and ultimately collaboration is really the key unlock that's going to drive change in the world. Remember, you know, alone we are smart, but together, we are brilliant, right? And so together we have to set carbon reduction goals, a net zero vision and engage and empower all of our stakeholders from farm to finished product along our supply chains. And remember that we do not inherit this land from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. And as a mother, remembering that the seed represents life and protecting our children's futures, I've never been so, you know, rattled than I am now watching, you know, the earthquakes and the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the floods, the fires, you know, hey, everyone, like this is not going away. We have to all take action because if you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. We have to build tangible strategies, timelines, roadmaps. Uh, we have to engage each other and we have to be accountable. And so final, you know, is the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. It can be super daunting to change a $3 trillion industry, but it's one step at a time. It's coming together and remember that every step we take, every move we make is either forward or backward. And we have no choice anymore. We have to wear the change that we all wish to see in the world. It's not just about being the change, right? We have to think about the textiles, this industry, and hold hands and make that change happen. So thank you all for being here. Again, I'm so sorry that my slideshow didn't pop up, um, but again, happy to share it um, after the event. So have a wonderful evening, everybody, and signing off from New York City.